there have been videos that have been made about me, um, made with ill intentions, obviously a strategy of the devil because the devil is very angry, obviously, of what's happening now. Um, demons have been able to hide for a long time. And not only are demons being cast out, but the devil's being exposed. People are like flying far now, like knowing, oh my goodness, Jesus can set me free. Jesus can set me free. I don't have to live with this. The devil is being exposed big time. The truth's coming out. And obviously, the devil is not happy about that one bit. Obviously, he's not going to sit by. And so, just as we saw in the Bible, the schemes that the devil had to stop the work of God by um, demonizing the servants of God, demonizing Jesus, saying he was using demonic powers to cast out demons, which is impossible, Jesus says. Um, those same schemes the devil uses today. Jesus is alive today, so the devil continues to attack Jesus today. But the difference is that Jesus, Jesus is living in us today. So um, that's why it says they're not persecuting you, they're, they're persecuting me, Jesus says. So there's been videos that have been that put out, made by people, um, not with love one bit. And so just side note, um, when you, not even just about me, but any person of God, any servant of God, when you see a video that you can kind of tell it's not made with love or you don't really know the person making it, um, that's an indicator that it's not going to be inspired by the Holy Spirit to make that video. Um, and if it's putting down a person of God, then that's going to be be inspired by the enemy. And um, a word of wisdom, once again, not just for me, but any servant of God, like be wise to not let any kind of door open for the enemy because the enemy is trying to bring confusion, doubt, and division. And he's trying to like, um, try to stop the revival fire. And people are on fire for revival right now. People are excited about what Jesus is doing. People are ready to run full force. And the devil's trying any way to see how he can at least like um, stifle the fire a bit. So he comes with these sneaky strategies to just like see if someone will open the door and like hear what he has to say right here lies here um, distorted truth twisting and the goal is to get one to be confused to get one to like step back and be like oh, am, I, am I being deceived you know that's that's the devil's aim and if you are opening the door to a video you can tell is made by inspired by the enemy it's just like it's kind of dangerous it's dangerous spiritually it's kind of like um jesus in his ministry you know his disciples they were so blessed by his ministry they were experiencing miracles they experienced nothing but blessings through the ministry of jesus peace and joy the fruits and then imagine if if they got coffee with a pharisee you know, like knowing how this Pharisee felt about Jesus, even though the, the person themselves experienced nothing but God through Jesus, nothing but blessing. It's, you know, kind of obvious that it would be a little bit dangerous to sit down with the Pharisee because the fair, you know, you know, the Pharisee's heart and you know, the Pharisee is going to try to plant these seeds. Like, you know what? I think you're actually being deceived. I think that Jesus actually using um, demonic powers and I'm going to show you the scripture now this is what the Pharisees did look how Jesus is going against the scripture here and here and here these are all the reasons why you sit down with the Pharisee and at the least it's just gonna cause a kind of spiritual war you know you can be victorious but it's dangerous it'd be it'd be the best would be to not sit down with the Pharisee but instead listen to advice 
from people you trust. Only take in advice from people you trust. Don't listen to random people talking, giving you advice about someone or a move of God or, or a ministry or where God. Don't listen to a random person, especially if they're not coming with love. Because if someone earnestly, you know, is, is, wants to expose someone that's not of God and they're like, they're from God and they're good, you can tell if it's coming with like genuine love, you know, you, you can tell the difference. So anyways, in these videos, um, they, they found this video from several years ago of words that I had spoke at a church in Africa. And they took it out of context, what I was saying. They took it out of context, what I was saying, and they twisted it. So they, they showed a video of words I spoke and then they put their own story, spin twisting on what I said. So I want to share with you what I said and to clarify and to share my heart behind it. They twisted their story. So I want to give you the truth and my heart. So there's no confusion. Amen. Almost five years ago this September, I had recently just encountered the power of God for the first time and my life was changed forever. I um, was a lukewarm Christian my whole life. I knew Jesus my whole entire life, but I never encountered the power of God. Therefore, I like wasn't in love with Jesus and I was more in religion and I had one foot in the world. I would party. I was trying to live the double life and go to church twice a week still and I loved God, but I was trying to live the double life. And I wanted to surrender. I didn't want to be lukewarm. I wanted to be on fire, but I was just like stuck. And the reason why I was stuck is because I hadn't met Jesus yet. So I could then fall in love with him. So then he was irresistible and it was just like, yes, Jesus, have my life, you know, my, from my heart instead of a, a surrender with your efforts. So I encountered the power of God for the first time um, uh, uh, almost six years ago this fall, six years ago this fall. And I witnessed demons cast out, people be healed, um, encountered prophetic ministry, was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And um, just in that one moment of encountering the power of God, my spiritual eyes opened up to how amazing Jesus is and how worthy he is of my surrender. And I surrendered to Jesus as soon as, as I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, one month after encountering the power of God on January 7, 2016, I surrendered to Jesus everything and I've been on fire ever since and since that day um, my biggest passion has been for other people to encounter the power of God I had been a Christian my whole life and just yearned to be surrendered yearned to be on fire yearned to have the more of Jesus and it wasn't until I was um, 24 when I first encountered the power of God and I had so many Christian friends and family in my life so I knew that like all of them pretty much had never encountered the power of God. And I could see that they were this, in the same place I was. So my biggest passion became, I want people to have the encounters with Jesus that I had. I want people to encounter prophetic ministry and receive freedom and healing and see who Jesus really is. That became my biggest passion, my biggest prayer, my biggest prayer. Well, God answered my prayer <laughs> in a more direct way than I meant. Um, my prayer was really just like, let people have the same experience as I did, Jesus. Let them encounter you. Not like, use me with your power. That was never my prayer. <laughs> but um, nine months after I first, after I surrendered to Jesus fully, when I really surrendered my dreams even, um, I went to a conference in Los Angeles. And at that conference, a prophet was ministering there. And this prophet's name is Prophet Jor Davy and he's from Tanzania East Tanzania East Africa and he and I watched the 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 service and I was in awe cuz it was I had seen demons cast out now at this point just recently just in the past 9 months and people be healed and the power of God move but this was a new level like what I saw 
amazed me. And I knew it was Jesus. You know, when you come with a humble childlike heart, you can see Jesus. It says the pure in heart can see God. And so when you come, not with skepticism, not being critical, but you just come with this pure childlike heart, God can show you, this is me. Like the disciples, they left everything and followed Jesus immediately with just seeing like one miracle that Jesus did. And Jesus was like, follow me. They didn't see his credentials or his past or anything. And they just followed him. Why? Because they were pure in heart, they were childlike. And so therefore they could really see and hear, this is God. This is wild, this is crazy, I'm leaving everything and following him, but I know that I know this is Jesus. So that's what happened for me. I, I knew that this was Jesus. I knew, I, I was convicted, this is a true prophet of God. And God had prepared me up to that point. I just learned that prophets still existed that same year. I just learned that apostles still existed that same year. And God had taught me and opened up my eyes to see that when a true prophet of God speaks, a true one, it is God speaking. So this prophet, after I saw this whole, this amazing move of God, like I've never seen before, and I was in awe, this prophet then prophesied to me, God has actually called you to be an apostle and to reach the nations and an apostle of Jesus Christ. And I know many of you know my story, so I, I won't go in depth, but long story short, I didn't want that. I wanted to be a singer. Public speaking was my biggest fear, my biggest weakness. When, so when I heard that word, I was like, what about music? I was hoping you'd prophesy about music. <laughs> but I was convicted. I knew it was God speaking. And also there had been like hints before this day that God had spoke to me, but it didn't make sense. There had been hints about ministry and walking in miracles, but I didn't understand it. As like God spoke to me things and I was like, what does that mean, you know? But then in that moment, those things came flooding back to me. And I just had that moment of Moses, like, I know this is God speaking. Like Moses, God spoke to Moses, I'm calling you to be a prophet, I'm calling you to be a mouthpiece. Um, I'm calling, of millions, a mouthpiece of me for millions. I'm calling you to lead millions. And Moses, like he knew it was God, but he was like, I can't speak though, what? I had that like exact moment. God reminded me of Moses in that moment. Cause I was like, what? I can't speak. I don't know how to minister. I don't know how to preach. I don't want that. That's not my passion. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, but God reminded me of Moses. So I knew, oh my goodness, this really is God. Whoa. But my heart had been surrendered to that point already where I just wanted God's will. So I was able to quickly obey. I was able to quickly be like, Okay, God, yes, Lord. Like Mary, Mary said to the angel, after the angel prophesied to her, I am a servant of the Lord, let it be done to me. That's what happened. I was like, I knew, know this is God. I'm a servant of the Lord, okay, let it be done to me. I don't know how this is gonna work, but Jesus is my Lord, I'm just a servant. So yes, God, whatever, whatever you want for me. So I accepted the call from there. And then I wanted to visit this ministry of Prophet Jordavi, the one who prophesied to me. I wanted to know more about him, know more about his ministry, know more. This was a life altering prophecy and I knew that it was God. I had already accepted the call, but with wisdom, I wanted to see more of who he was, see more of his ministry, see more of his fruits and learn and grow. Um, so I traveled to Tanzania, East Africa, where he leads a church of several thousands of people. I think there's about 5,000 or so that come every week. I went there and I was blown away by the miracles that I witnessed. I have never seen God move in that kind of power up to that point in my life. I was amazed. Um, there was one service I went to where Prophet Joe Davy, where he, it was a deliverance service, and for an hour and a half, he's just casting out demon after demon by the power of Jesus. And I just would see these demons tremble in people and speak things out of people, like the way that they were trying to torture the person. And I just saw the demons obey and obey and obey and obey and be cast out, cast out one after another, one after another and I was changed forever. I've never been so speechless in my life. 
I've never, I've never felt so like reverent before God before where I couldn't speak. Like um, what I witnessed was so holy. Um, my revelation of God increased so much. My revelation of his power, his love for his people, the revelation of how evil the devil is, like afflicting people with demons so bad. Um, but then on the contrast, how loving Jesus is that he just wants to free his people immediately. He, he doesn't want to make them do anything. Like they just, like he's just here to free them. Like he sees them in bondage. He just wants to free them. Like my eyes opened up to that reality, like never before. Um, and I've never been that way in my life where I felt like I couldn't speak. I, I was invited to speak on the stage after that to just introduce myself. I'm traveling here from Los Angeles, from America. And I didn't want to, like, I, I felt like I wasn't worthy to speak. Like it felt so holy. I was that just in awe of Jesus where I just wanted to just be in awe and just, just be in awe. And that day changed me forever. That day changed me forever, forever. Like that's, it's to, to look demons in the eye and to stand strong when they're being annoying demons and, you know, um, and intimidating like what gives me strength is what Jesus started to do what Jesus did in me that day like what he put in my heart gives me strength like Jesus really wants to set his people free and people really are in bondage and if we can stand strong you know and be uncomfortable and look the darkness in the eye and be serious you know and not give up then Jesus can come and set his people free when we can do that when we can be vessels, when we can walk in authority. Um, so as time went on, God revealed to me that this man of God, Prophet Joe Davey, God wanted him to be my, my mentor, my covering, because that is important. That is important to have a spiritual covering, to have a mentor so you can grow and learn. So I learned so much. I learned so much from him. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for that mentor in my life. It's such a big reason why I'm he here I am today because God used him to help me to grow, to teach me, to teach me spiritual truths. Um, so I, I've visited that church several times and been amazed at what God did. I've spoke there, I've taught there myself, I've ministered there myself, and every time I've visited, I've grown so much more spiritually. Um, this man of God, I honor him, I honor him. He, God has used him to bring me closer to Jesus than ever before. Um, I've just experienced the love of God through him so much as God uses vessels. He is so much like Jesus, like I hadn't seen in my life an example of Je like someone like Jesus. We're all being transformed into the image of Jesus. And I am so grateful that I had an example and someone to help me learn and grow and to walk in the power of God and to receive, to receive anointing. To from as, as um, anointing comes through impartation and it can be through different vessels of God. God has different ways, but I've been able to receive from there as well. So that being said, um, in, in this video that was made of, of, of me, it was at me speaking at that church and I was honoring this man of God, Prophet Jordavi, I was honoring him before his his congregation i was honoring him i was speaking from my heart once again this was several years ago i was speaking from my heart how i wanted so badly what i had seen there and only there to happen in america meaning the power of god the miracles the deliverance the healings, the joy, the way people, people were in church for hours with the most energy I've ever seen, the way they're worshiping Jesus is like I've never seen, like jumping up and down. <laughs> it's amazing. So my heart 
burned. Remember going back to before I met before I met this prophet, my mentor, and he prophesied to me. Before that, remember my biggest passion was for people to encounter the power of God as I had, and I knew how rare it was. I'm just checking to see we're still online on Facebook and YouTube here. I think we're good. So when I, I, I wanted so badly the power of God that I saw, the miracles, I wanted that to be in America. That was my heart's cry. My heart burned for it. God put that heart in me. He put that heart in me. Well, I burned for it. God had also revealed to me that the ministry of the prophet is so important. This prophetic word that was released to me, you're called to be an apostle. I didn't get any dreams or visions that I was called to be an apostle. Now God does speak that way, yes. But I'm saying in my case, God chose to move in that way. That changed my life. And now I knew my calling, my purpose, because there was a prophet of God whom God used to speak. This is what God says. On top of that, I, I received so much um, prophetic direction along the way, like the devil's coming in this way, or this is what's going on in the spiritual realm. And it helped me so much to be able to see in the spiritual realm what's going on and to have victory over the enemy. Also, I never discovered the love of Jesus so much until it was through the office of a prophet. And it happened to be through Prophet Jordan before me. The, the heart of God that comes through a prophet, it's like speaking, like I, the prophetic ministry, it's like God locates you. He knows what you're going through. He, he speaks that through a vessel. And it's like in that moment, you have this revelation you never had before. God really has heard my prayers. God's really with me all the time. God really is with me all the time. God really loves me. His word is true. That's what happened to me. With one prophetic word, my eyes opened up like that. I went from believing that God was real to knowing he was real, he was with me, he loves me so much, and his word is true. This is the kind of revelation eye-opening that happened when I received a prophetic word through a prophet. So as he was my mentor, I was receiving many prophetic words throughout my, throughout my time growing. And this was this constant blessing where, where my, revelation of, my revelation of God's love just kept growing and growing because of this precious prophetic ministry. So God opened up my eyes to see what he says in Ephesians 4, 11 is true, is, is, is really tr the truth, is really for today. Ephesians 4, 11 says that God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the purpose of edifying, building up, maturing the believers so that they are mature and prepared to do good works for the Lord. In other words, so that they are built up in God's love. They are victorious. They know God's love. They can see in the spiritual realm what's going on, how the devil's trying to attack. And they can have victory as they know God's love and they know how to have victory over the devil through that spiritual warfare. So now they can be used by God. That's the purpose of the fivefold ministry. It says that these are gifts for the body of Christ. Well, that scripture came alive for me so much. My goodness, prophets and apostles. But for me in this situation, prophets are gifts, are gifts for me to know Jesus's love as he works through vessels, as he works through prophets. Gifts for me to be equipped there's so many times where the devil was trying in some area so much and my mentor, Prophet Jer Davies, spoke like, this is what's going on in the spiritual realm or the devil's really mad and he's coming, but you have, Jesus is with you and the devil's just a liar and he's just trying because he's mad at what you're doing. And just the simple prophetic words, the simple insight, prophetic insight made me strong and made me know God's love more and that he was with me. So. I was so passionate. It was the heart of God God put in me. Passionate.
for people to receive prophets and apostles, all fivefold ministers, for people to receive their ministries, for, for the body of Christ to have these gifts so God can move how he wants to, so God can move through all five. We need all five, and he's not gonna be manipulated. If we cut out one or two, we're missing part of Jesus. We're missing part of him. We're still getting him, but there's, there's more of him that we're missing out on. So, my heart was burning. The world needs to receive this ministry of the office of prophet just as I have, so that they can really know Jesus. Now, this prophet was the only real prophet in my life who I had encountered. So even though I knew, at the time, this was years ago, even though I knew that there are many other prophets in this world and that God wants to use and is currently using, even though I knew that, he was the only one I saw before my eyes and who I had encountered and been blessed by. So I spoke words that were childish because I was a child in the Lord. Apostle Paul says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish, childish things. This is 1 Corinthians 13, 11. So remember, this was just about a year, a year or so after I had first encountered the power of God so though I was a Christian my whole life, I was a baby in the Lord. And I went to this church and I was honoring this man of God. I was not glorifying him. I was honoring him as God calls us to give honor where honor is due. And so it was this moment of honoring him. And my heart was to honor him. My heart was not to glorify him in any way. I've never glorified any man. I've only ever given glory to Jesus, even when I was a child in the Lord. But in that moment, I spoke like a child. I spoke, the words came across, not what my heart was. And so what I meant to say, what I meant to say was, the world will not know the real Jesus until they encounter the power of God, until they encounter prophets as well as all fivefold ministries. They won't know the fullness of Jesus. That's what I meant to say. But what I said was, and I am denouncing these words right now before you, because the words I said do not reflect my truth now and were just spoken as a child in the Lord and speaking as a child who's so enthusiastic and excited like a child says to their dad you're a superhero a child can say you're the best he my dad's the best dad in the world he's way better than your dad a child can say that they don't mean it with ill intent they don't mean to glorify their dad it's pure that's how I was speaking <laughs> but it comes off it comes off to people through this video like I was glorifying a man. So I'm denouncing these words right now because I want you to be to know for real my heart and where I stand. So it said so the words I said was they will not know the real Jesus unless they know you. I said that to him to prophet Jer Davy. I denounce those words now. Like I said what I meant what I meant with my heart was I've never encounter Jesus's love like I have through you. It's all you. It's not the man. It's Jesus. I want the world to be blessed how I was. And all I know is that I received that blessing through this prophet of God, this man of God. So I just want this for the world. It was just like this child heart, enthusiastic heart speaking this. And it was not meant to go to the world. It was for his um, church people who, who I knew did not glorify him at all. And so they knew my heart. So I just spoke like a child, so enthusiastic and passionate. By the way, and I'm gonna keep sharing words that I spoke, um, but I want to share with you that after I spoke these things, my mentor, Prophet Jer Davy, spoke to me, I know your heart, I know your heart, but I want to correct you. Um, when you speak in public like that, like that, it can come, some people could take it the wrong way. So 
be sure that it's known that you're only glorifying God. You know, so he corrected all of these words that I'm sharing with you that I'm denouncing right now because he is, has the heart of Jesus and, and, and glorifies Jesus with everything he does. So that's what I meant by those words. Um, another word that I spoke, um, the, the, the Bible talks about, Jesus talks about after the disciples, after the disciples um, came back to Jesus and they were so excited that they cast out demons, uh, Jesus says to them, Jesus, Jesus says, I've given you all authority to the kingdom. And then he praises God and he says, I praise you, God, that you've only revealed these things. In other words, these secrets, these keys to those who become like a child. You've hidden it to those who are proud and wise in their own, wise, own eyes. So Jesus gives keys to vessels of God, to us who are childlike only. And he hides the keys from those who are wise and pride in their own eyes. So I saw Prophet Jordabi. I saw these miracles happen that I hadn't seen before. I saw all this deliverance. And I was like, Jesus has given him the keys and I've only seen this here. And I was just excited. I wasn't, I wasn't saying it as like, I only want this person to be used by God. God's only chosen this person. No, but I had only seen it here. So with enthusiasm, speaking like a child and just my heart honoring, I was so grateful for him. I spoke with such passion. I spoke, um, you have the keys to America and only you. I denounce those words now. Once again, what I meant was I've only seen deliverance like this. I've only seen miracles here. So Jesus has given you the keys. You need to come minister in America. I, we need to see this in America. That was my heart. But I denounced those words. Jesus has not given only the keys to the kingdom, only the keys for miracles to happen, for the power of God to be released, only to one person, only to him. Absolutely not. Jesus has given it to all people, no matter your position, no matter your title, to all people who are childlike and humble. As we saw even that little boy in Miami um, preaching and demons were cast out live from Danica in LA through. So Jesus gave him the keys right there. Hallelujah. So that is the truth. That's my heart. Because I was so blessed by his ministry, I wanted so badly the world to know him, for them to know Jesus through him, for them to receive the blessings I had. Because I, all I knew was like, wow, I've been blessed. Please, can the whole world know you? Because I feel like I'm just keeping it to myself right now and the world needs to be blessed too. <laughs> That's how I felt once again, like a child. So I spoke these words. I spoke we because there were people with me who traveled with me on this occasion who were also so blessed by this prophet of God whose lives had also been transformed by Jesus through his ministry, through the prophetic ministry, through prophetic words, direction. Um, Jean Tal, our worship leader at Fivefold Church, she was with me on this day. So she was one of these people that I was speaking on behalf of. And I said, you know, we together would talk about like, man, we just feel so blessed. We want the whole world. We're, we're hungry for revival in America. We want the whole world to experience this. And so we wanted people to experience the ministry we had through him. So, um, I said on behalf of everyone, we want the world to know you. We want you to be famous. I meant for the glory of Jesus. We want you to be well known so that we're not the only ones who receive this blessing. I denounce those words now because left alone, it makes it look like I'm not giving glory to God. But that was not my heart. I denounce those words now. I want Jesus to be known. I want God to lift up any vessel of God he chooses, young, old, unlikely, likely, man, woman. We need an army of God and I want God to lift up, to make well known and famous every person of God that he chooses so that his power can move through and be released to this world for his glory, for his glory. I want anyone he chooses to be lifted to have a platform 
for His glory so that more people can know and more people can receive. Okay, then I said, um, I said, we would be nothing without you. Now, this is simply, you, you probably have said that to many people in your life, your mother, father. You don't, you don't mean it as you without Jesus, I would be nothing without you. That's exactly what I'm, I didn't mean it was him, a man doing everything, helping me, blessing me. The way Jesus moved through him, I felt like, man, I'm called to be an apostle and thank God that there was a prophet of God to speak this. Thank God he went through persecution, he was obedient, he was strong so he could be obedient and speak that prophetic word of God to me, you're called to be an apostle. So I felt like, whoa, I just wanna honor you. Like, thank you for your obedience because because you were obedient to God, I got to hear my calling in life and know my calling in life. Without me fulfilling my purpose on this earth, I'm, I'm like nothing. Like we, you know, like we're called to fulfill our purpose here on this earth of Jesus. So that was my heart. It was not, I would be nothing without uh, 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 this man alone, without Jesus. So I denounced those words, we would be nothing without you. And then I also said, all of this joy you see on all of us, this transformation, it is only because of you. Once again, the same thing. We were lit on joy by Jesus. And it was Jesus through the ministry, seeing miracles happen. So it's, I was honoring and thinking, we have so much joy because of Jesus moving through you. But the words I said, if it does not give glory, I, if it's not giving glory to God, how you hear it, I must announce it. I must announce those words. So all of those words that you heard me, if you heard me spoke on this video, I denounce them. My heart is to always give glory to God. And even then when I was a child in the Lord, my heart was to always give glory to God, never man. And I honor my mentor for guiding me so well through as the Holy Spirit led him and correcting me lovingly and teaching me and growing, I've changed so much from then. And that is fruit of this mentorship. Um, you can look through all of my teachings from years past. I teach like three times a week. And I'm never even speaking about a man and how you need a man of God, how you need a, how you need this man of God, how you need a prophet, how I, I'm never giving glory to a man. I'm never giving glory to anybody but Jesus. You can see that in all my teachings and I, I really want that to always be what's come across and what's released, that all of the glory comes, goes to Jesus and everything that happens through my ministry, all the miracles that happened, of the testimonies we read about, we hear how you've been blessed. All the glory must go to Jesus. And please never give me glory. Please know that it's just, I'm just a vessel. It's Jesus in me. You can, we, we honor vessels of God. It's very important. We honor and we thank for their obedience, yes, but never give glory. Jesus is the one doing every miracle. Jesus is the one bringing every transformation. So all glory goes to Jesus now, forever, and always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm not a child in the Lord anymore. I spoke childish things in the past. And now I am not a child in the Lord anymore. Hallelujah. And God's giving me grace to best articulate to make sure there's no confusion of where any glory goes to. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Um, also, also, the in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 20, it says, To the Jews I became like a Jew, to win the Jews. This is Apostle Paul speaking. To the Jews I became like a Jew, to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law. So as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am free from God's law, but under Christ's law. So as to win those who ha not having the law. 
to the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means, I might save some. Do you know that God calls us to not be stubborn and prideful in our culture and our ways? But do you know that God calls us to be respectful to other people's cultures out of love in order that we may win some souls? Because if you come with this respect to other cultures, if you come with, because we all have different cultures and none of them are better than the other. American culture isn't better than another culture. But if you come with your own culture, like stubborn, like my culture's best, I'm not gonna change. It's not showing love. <laughs> it's not showing love. It's like if you go to a different um, country and they make this food for you and it's in their culture, it's like really disrespectful to not even like try the food or something and you don't do that and they just feel so much pain and they feel like they hate you and they've done something wrong and you've just, you haven't shown them love. You've done the opposite of that. But not in America. In America you say, oh, I actually don't eat that food or I'm vegan or something. You know, you just, and it's no big deal. But in other cultures it's different. So God actually calls us to, with love, be like the culture in order to win them, in order to show love, in order they may be open to receive the message of the gospel that you carry. So Africa has a much different culture than America. Once again, no culture is better than the other. But as Americans, unfortunately, there is that like spirit of ethnocentrism um, where you, th you feel like it's like the best or it's the right and others are wrong. Um, so in Africa, they have much different cultures, different cultures in church as well. So at their church, they do things differently in America just because of culture. And now, it's important to sow into the work of God and to give to ministries, sowing into, sowing into giving to God by giving to ministries. So I, I and the people I was with when we came that day to that church, we planted a seed to that ministry with the heart of Jesus, I'm planting this seed into this work of God, into where the power of God's moving. This is for America. I want, in the world, I want what I see here, the power of God that's happening here, to be in America too, Lord. So I'm putting this seed here now into your work, to you, Jesus, to reap what I see here, to reap miracles, to reap your power, revival. So that's, we, so I sowed a seed. We sowed a seed there at that ministry. Now, Prophet Jordavi represents the ministry. He's the leader of the ministry there. And so in their culture there, you don't just pass around offering buckets and put it in there. That's the culture of America. And it's awesome. Great. But the culture there is different. And so the culture there is to lay the seed, the offering, the seed at the feet of the head of the ministry, of the yeah, head of the ministry as he represents the ministry, as he presents the work of God. You're the leader of this work of God where all these miracles are happening, the power of God's released. So you represent this, um, but you're giving the seed to God. You're not giving it to a man, you're giving it to God. So the culture there is to plant the seed at the feet. That's just their culture. In their culture of how they do that, that is not glorifying a man. That is not um, bowing down to a man like, like a king or something. That is not their cult. That is not how it is seen in their culture. It's just their culture. This is how they plant seeds to God. It's just their culture. Okay. We don't have to judge it. We can just accept it. That's their culture. It's good to, un it's important to understand. Okay. I want to make sure I'm not, you know, glorifying a man, but when you can ask questions and understand their culture, then you should go with their culture to respect their culture, to win people. I came there and I preached and I ministered. Well, I was doing what Paul said, Paul said to do. I become like them to win them. And they could see, oh, they're honoring our, our 
our our father, our father of the ministry. They're honor they're, they're honoring him. So we I knelt on the ground and I placed a seed before God. So it that's it was not uh, glorifying a man, glorifying him in any way. It was just their culture. Also, in their culture, um, it is it is their culture to call the leader of the minister, the lead pastor, the lead leader of the ministry of the church, father or mother. Father or mother. It's like spiritual father. You know, Apostle Paul, he says, you have many teachers, but only one father. He says the word father, meaning like spiritual father. It, it, it means like mentor, really. It means that representing the covering. Not father, not heavenly father, not father in heaven, no. That's their culture. We don't do that in America. We just say pastor, we say um, apostle, prophet, evangelist. That's what we say. Um, so that's their culture to say father or mother. And um, or in their culture, there's two different words they use a lot, daddy and baba. Baba means father. So, daddy sounds silly to say here in America because daddies, you only say daddy usually if you're a child to your father and then you grow up and you say dad usually. If you want, some people can continue to say daddy, that's fine. Um, but that's just the American culture. But in that culture, it's not seen that way. It's not seen as like this weird, why are you calling him daddy, you know? It's simply father, spiritual father. Daddy, that's what it means. Daddy and Baba, which Baba literally in, in Swahili means father. Swahili is the um, language of, of Tanzania. So to be prideful and stubborn and to be like, I don't want to say those things. I'm just going to call him prophet. That culture sees it as very disrespectful. So it's God does not want me or us to be stuck in our pride and worried about how people think or whatever and stay with their own culture and not go to the culture so that they can't receive him. So I said, I said, I think I said Baba, I think I said Daddy, going with their culture. Now if he came, if he came here, I wouldn't say, This is Daddy, everyone, this is Baba. But it was their culture respecting them and they were they were touched. They were touched that me being an American, and especially Americans are known as being like ethnocentric, you know, they were touched. They were blessed that I valued them, that I came with love, you know, that I wasn't like stuck and prideful, like, nope, I'm just doing it the American way. You can see they were, they were touched, you know, that I respected them, that I came with respect. And um, Prophet Joe Davy is my mentor to this day, and I'm so grateful that God placed him in my life for him to be a vessel of God for me. Hallelujah. So I think I addressed everything in the video. The video was trying to twist me to make me seem like I was glorifying a man and it was also several years ago. Um, now you know that they were twisting and painting a picture of me that is not the truth and you heard the truth from me that I only give glory to Jesus, hallelujah. He is the one who is only worthy of all the glory and all the honor, hallelujah.